Okay, welcome folks. So for this brief video, we're going to have a discussion about a very famous philosophy, philosophy thought experiment. Uh, this is certainly one of the most uh, well-known hypothetical scenarios uh, in the recent history of philosophy. And it was developed uh, by this fella right here, uh, the late Robert Nozick, uh, who for many years taught at Harvard University. Uh, and this thought experiment comes from his book, uh, Anarchy, State, and Utopia. Uh, so this is a thought experiment that's meant to convince us that hedonism is a false theory of well-being. Right, so the hedonistic theory of well-being just tells us that you're doing well to the extent that you have a life that is very pleasant, right? So the more pleasure and the less pain there is in your life, the better you're doing, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so Nozick disagrees with this hedonistic theory of well-being, which means to say that he denies that all there is to a life well lived is a life full of pleasure. So how's he going to argue against that kind of view? You might think, like, what could there be more to life than, say, uh, you know, going on nice walks, uh, laughing with your friends, petting dogs? And we say, well, you know, the reason why all these things are good is because they bring pleasure to my life. Right? Well, Nozick says this. He imagines this thing called the experience machine. Right. Now he says, in this experience machine, you can plug into it and have any experience you like. Right. So, you know, it might be kind of like this still from a movie that many of you might know, The Matrix. Right. So in The Matrix, people are plugged in. You know, there might be some sort of like adapter in the back of their skull. It goes straight to the brain. And when you're plugged in, and then, you know, you might be, like, stuck into a pod, like they do in the Matrix, right? Uh, that you're going to have any experience you like, right? So it might be that you could have uh, the most lovely set of experiences of spending time with friends or writing a great novel and then winning great acclaim for it. Of course, these wouldn't actually be things that you do right? Uh, you're not actually writing a great novel. Basically what they've done is they've recorded somebody else's mental brain experiences and then just like copied them right over. And it feels like you're writing the novel. And it feels like you're winning the award, but it's really just an illusion. So yeah, the whole machine is programmed ahead of time. Uh, so it's going to be a guaranteed pleasant experience. And, you know, you, we could even, like, further stipulate that, you know, you could have this life pre-planned out ahead of time, uh, and then you go and you tell the programmers which experience you would like to have. They plug you in, and you forget that you ever chose to be in an experience machine. You know, while you're having experiences, it's going to feel like you're really doing these things. But, of course, it's not going to be real. Right? So here's the question. Uh, would you plug into one of these machines forever? Would you go for this sort of hypothetical uh, life full of pleasure? Well, Nozick thinks that you wouldn't. Right? He says that there's going to be stuff that matters to us that we're going to miss out on when we plug into the experience machine. And moreover, he says that if we know that there are things that matter to us outside the experience machine, beyond simply the pleasure that we experience of them, then he says that there's stuff that matters to us other than how things feel from the inside, right? The thought is, is that once you plug into the experience machine, you're going to have all these awesome experiences, Right? From the inside, it's going to be as good as it could possibly be. 
Uh, but Nozick thinks that there's something missing here. So what would our reasons not to plug in be? Well, the way that Nozick puts it is that we want to do certain things and not just have the experience of doing them, right? We want to have meaningful interactions with actual friends, not just have an experience that feels like having friends, right? We want to actually solve other people's problems. We don't just want to feel like we're solving other people's problems like we would in the experience machine, right? And we also want to be a certain way and to be a certain sort of person, right? So you might think to yourself, the kind of life that I want for myself is to be a helper, right? I want to do things that can make another person's life a little easier, right? And maybe you might choose to become a doctor or a teacher or a therapist or something like that on the basis of like wanting to be that certain kind of person. In the experience machine, you can feel like you're a doctor and you can feel like you're helping people, but you're not actually healing anybody, right? You're just an indeterminate blob uh, inside of a pod having these false experiences fed into you. Right, so he basically says that plugging into an experience machine limits us to a man-made reality. <laughs> we'd really say reality in quotation marks because everything that you experience is really illusion. So here's the moral of the thought experiment for Nozick. He says that what we learn here is that something matters to us in addition to, or we might say like over and above simple experiences. And the way that he says it is, we have a desire not just to have good experiences, but we desire to live. And he thinks like living is like an active verb, you know, an active verb being something like singing or uh, walking, right? Living is a process of doing, right? And we want to live ourselves in contact with reality. So, this thought experiment and the moral that Nozick draws from it is supposed to be an objection to hedonism, right? Because hedonism, we'll remember, is just a theory that says uh, your life is going to we well to the extent that you're having a pleasant experience, right? Uh, so here's how the argument would go says, if hedonism is true, then being plugged into the experience machine is just as good as being in the real world. But then two, Nozick is going to tell us that being plugged into the experience machine is not as good as being in the real world, right? So we would say, like, it's not actually as good to have the experience of helping others as it is to uh, actually helping others and then, you know, having pleasure along the way, right? The hedonist is going to say, same amount of pleasure, same amount of well-being, right? And from this, we can get this conclusion, right? That hedonism is false, right? Because if hedonism really were true, then premise two couldn't be true. So if premise two is true, like you'd be worse off with the same experiences in the experience machine, then hedonism is going to be false. This is very closely related to an argument that we saw elsewhere in the textbook, which pointed out that hedonism can't distinguish between pleasures from true beliefs as compared to pleasures based on false beliefs. But we're going to see that if that's right, then premise two couldn't be true. But because you may well find premise two to be very true or very plausible, like Robert Nozick does, well, then you're going to have to give up hedonism. Right? So one is basically just true by definition. Uh, 
if you really understand what hedonism means, then you have to say one, right? Same experience of pain and pleasure, that means same quality of well-being. But then if you agree with Nozick that, you know, doing well isn't just having certain feelings, but also doing certain things, then that's going to be incompatible with hedonism. So that logically gives us a reason to give up hedonism. So note that the experience machine is not an objection to other theories of well-being. So the desire satisfaction theory says, well, you're made well off when your desires are satisfied, right? But we might say, you know, if you're in the experience machine and you desire to write a great novel and win accolades for it, well, in the experience machine, you're not actually doing that, right? Because that experience isn't of you actually doing this thing and you're not actually earning praise from actual people, you're just getting it from illusions. Right, so the desire satisfaction theory is gonna say that your desires are satisfied only if they're actually fulfilled. Right, we could say a similar thing about objective theories of well-being. Like an objective theory of well-being might say, you are better off to the extent that you have friends in the experience machine, you don't actually have any friends. And in that sense, uh, you know, you're not made better off. So it seems to be that the experience machine is only going to hold things equal for theories of well-being that are fully psychological and all about how things feel to you uh, from the inside, which is not the case with the desire satisfaction theory or an objective theory of well-being. So we might pause for a second and just like ask, well, like, how can a hedonist reply to this sort of objection? Uh, you know, we should notice that all philosophers pretty much know about this thought experiment. They know about this challenge for hedonism, but some philosophers are still hedonists after all this. Uh, which means that they're going to have to have some explaining to do. So one thing that a hedonist could do is they could insist that being in the experience machine is just as good as actually doing these things. So they'd basically just have to say that insofar as like most people say that they'd prefer not to plug into the experience machine, you know, even if you'd have more pleasure? Well, the hedonist would then have to say that most people are mistaken when they say that it would be better not to plug in. You know, in a similar way, hedonists might point out that some things in the experience machine would be just as good within the machine. So you might think, well, like, what's one thing that makes my life better? I would be happy to give this answer in saying that one thing that I get to do in the real world that makes my life better is engage with art, right? Watch a really good movie, read a really good book, listen to some good songs, right? In the experience machine, uh, it doesn't seem like there's any important difference between, uh, you know, reading a novel in the real world as opposed to reading that same novel in the experience machine. Like, in one we're reading fiction in the real world, and one we're reading fiction in the experience machine, right? Same thing with a song, right? So if I listen to my favorite song in the real world, I don't think it would be any worse if, you know, I was in the experience machine listening to that song on illusory speakers or illusory headphones. Right? And then, you know, the hedonist might also say, well, in the experience machine, there's no chance of being discovered that you're being tricked, which might explain why we hate deception in the real world. Right? That's why we might say something like, well, you're worse off uh, if your spouse is cheating on you, even if you never find out about it, because you're living a life at risk of finding out this very painful fact. 
right? Uh, we might think like that might be why we hate being deceived in the real world. That's no risk in the experience machine. Nozick even stipulates that there's no way you're ever going to be able to find out you're in the machine once you're in there and having the experiences. So the hedonist might still try to find some ways of trying to convince us that being plugged into the experience machine is just as good as having those same experiences in the real world. You know, pleasure and pain is what we need to focus on entirely. Um, and the question about reality is, for the hedonist, not as important. For somebody like Nozick, though, it's everything. So that's it for this uh, brief discussion of the experience machine. Uh, so here are a couple of things to think about for yourself. Uh, do you think that you would plug into the experience machine? Uh, would you trade living in the real world for living in an artificial reality where you're guaranteed to have a super pleasant experience? You might also ask yourself, would you be happy for your entire family to be plugged into the experience machine? You know, again, we could stipulate that they're going to have an even better time in there uh, than we're all currently having out here. Um, and a further reflection beyond that um, is this question about whether Nozick has actually proven hedonism to be the wrong theory of well-being. Uh, so are you on board with him? Do you think he's given us definitive reason to think that living in the real world has something especially important about it that goes beyond just experiencing things? Is it important to genuinely be a certain kind of person, to genuinely do certain kinds of things? If you're sure of that, then you can agree with Nozick, uh, and you can see uh, this experience machine argument as a proof that hedonism is a false theory of well-being. Uh, but with that, uh, we'll wrap it up for this little video. Uh, thanks so much for listening in.